Do you want to know how to populate Excel templates using Power Automate? I'm the Productivity Coach, and I've got a friend who can show you how. Hi, I'm Stuart Rinat, the Productivity Coach, and I'm a Modern Work Customer Success Manager at Microsoft. And today I'm joined by a friend, Damien Bird, who's going to show us some great stuff to do with Power Automate and Excel and how that all comes together. So, Damien, do you want to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what you do and uh, how you kind of got into the Power Platform? Yeah, sure. Hi, Stuart. Um, my name is Damien Bird. I've recently uh, entered into the Power Platform uh, community as Demo Bird 365. I've been a systems analyst for the past 20 years and the last three years taking an interest in uh, Teams and uh, SharePoint and uh, was key to the, the rollout at Aberdeen City Council. So in the last 12 months, I've uh, started playing with uh, the Power Platform and in particular Power Automate. And uh, in the last two months, uh, I was on one of the um, big events, learning how to, how to do all the tricks of the trade and decided to start doing my own uh, videos and uh, blog posts, uh, showing you how to do the clever stuff. Absolutely, I think one of the great things that I really like about the Power Platform is that it's got one of the most supportive communities I know. There's so many people who are just there, there are everybody else is just trying to learn from each other. Um, there's loads of great content out there on YouTube and lots of great tutorials, etc. cetera. So, um, so what are you gonna show us today then? So I've put together a demonstration today where I'm going to take a series of data, invoice data. So imagine you're a, a, a shop or a business where you're producing invoices for your customers. Um, I've put together a solution that will take that, that information and pre-populate an Excel template. Um, so that Excel template is actually from the Microsoft website itself. They have several uh, template invoices. Um, traditionally use Microsoft Word, but uh, I thought I'd look at something different, see if I could do it via Excel. So that's my aim today, is to show you how I uh, populate a Microsoft uh, template document. Cracking, that's great. So um, I'd love to see how it works, so, uh, so let's dive in. Okay, so I'm already in my flow here, and I'll maybe go through that in a bit more detail, but we'll talk about some of the other components first. So if I look, first of all, the template, template invoice I've got here, this is just an Excel file that, like I say, I've downloaded off of the Microsoft website. Um, it's in an invoice invoice format. It's got the various columns for your your orders. Uh, and the good thing about this is because it's because it's come from Microsoft, it's pre-built here with uh, some of the sums and some of the logic, the functions that are required to to calculate your order lines and your uh, total discount, your your VAT, and such like. So my, my aim really is to pass all my data from a, another source into this template document. Uh, and this template is a file that I keep saved away in another folder and never overwrite. I'm always taking a copy of it and, and, and populating it. Um, so what, what I'm gonna do here is I've, I've got a SharePoint list uh, and I've got a couple of customers in here at the moment. Uh, and I'd like to add, uh, you and uh, Stuart as a, as a new customer, um, just for the purpose of this demo. So I'm going to stick you in. If you'd like to create a company name or anything like that you fancy, keep me. You can call it Rid Out Enterprises. OK. Any old streets you fancy? Any. Uh, so let's say number 10. Uh, Pooch Avenue. This is this is a pet supplies, isn't it? Yeah, my particular invoice is certainly for uh, pet supplies. Yeah, anywhere in the world uh, you fancy being. The lovely Milton Keynes. There we go. Oh, that's right, is it? That's right. Yep. Yeah. And then last their phone number. Oh one nine oh eight. One two three four five six. I wonder if this is someone's real telephone number. Okay, so I've added you as a, as a customer. And the next thing I'm going to do is uh, stick in my customer order line. So imagine you've come into that pet shop and you've uh, ordered several uh, items. Actually, in fact, I'm going to go into the edit and grid view just to make it easier for me to put in multiple lines. So we're going to say you've ordered three. I'm going to give it, uh, I'm going to make up some random uh, order item numbers here. And can you think of anything that you'd like to buy in the pet shop? Three of? Uh, well, let's, let's buy bags of uh, dog food. 
And this doesn't have to be done through uh, through SharePoint, does it? So it could be that you might have oh. a power app that, that you could populate all of this with. Exactly, exactly. So at the moment, I'm just showing you how to use an external source. Um, so I'll put in a value for that and uh, a discount. We'll give you 5% discount as well. And maybe we'll just stick in a few more items, a few more items in here. So again, your customer three, we'll say you've ordered eight of these. We'll stick in a few more item numbers. And what should we go for? Some cat letter as well. Yeah. And just stick in another price there, an expensive bag of cat letter. We'll give you 10%. And we'll just put one more thing in, I think, just for this particular invoice. So for, are you allowed to buy animals in this particular pet shop? Uh, well, let, let's do dog leads. Let's uh, dog leads. Dog leads. My, okay. my dog has just chewed through her own dog lead, so uh, that's particularly on my mind at the moment. Expensive dog leads, but because you've bought four of them, I'm going to give you a whole 25% discount. Okay, so like, like you say, that this data could come from any source, um, but it's just purely to show you how I'm going to sort of populate this particular invoice file using my Power Automate. So if, if I jump back onto my flow, um, what should I do here? Shall I give it a test run and then walk through how, how it comes together? That, that sounds or, perfect to me, yeah. Okay, so we'll, we'll go into test here. And uh, one of the first things that my flow does is it asks for the customer number. So if you remember, I gave you customer number three. So I'm going to stick the number three in there, run the flow. And if everything goes OK, if I jump into my invoices uh, folder on my OneDrive, we should see a file appear here in a minute. So there we go. We've got our file, which is a copy of that template, template invoice. And you'll see now we've got your, your details here that we provided earlier as your, your customer details. And here we've got our three lines for our invoice, uh, the bags of dog food, cat litter and dog leads, the discount that we were applying. And uh, like I mentioned earlier, because this uh, template includes sums or functions already as part of the, the template, it's already calculated our running line total. And further down, we've got our, our subtotal and our, our final total there. Um, so that's 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 the basics of it. I've taken data from an external source, passed it to a Power Automate, and then populated um, an Excel uh, template. So I suppose, how did I do that? Is, is the next is the next question. Absolutely, I think that we, I can see so many uses for this. So uh, so yeah, so let's walk through how you got there. So if I, if I jump into my uh, Power Automate or my Cloud Flow. Um, I'm going to go into the edit mode. So remember, one of the first things I said was this invoice, I'm using it as a template. So uh, the first thing, the first action I do here is to actually take a copy of that original template file and give it a unique unique name using the format date time expression. Uh, I'm then uh, pulling the customer number that I provided uh, in a compose action so that I can then use it within the get item action. And, and the purpose of that get item action is to re retrieve all the customer details for for customer number three in this particular example. Can I just ask you just to pop up, uh, just up for one, on the one where you've copied the file, uh, there was you had that function in there. Can we just take a look at, at, at the contents of that function, the format date time one? So the, the get item uses a customer number and returns that particular customer. Um, so in this case, it was, it was customer number three, and that will get the single customer and, and their details that we provided. Then I'm using get items to return all of that the orders for that particular or, or, or the order line, sorry, for that particular customer. So this is where I've actually used a filter query um, where the, the title, um, which just happens to be my customer ID in my uh, my list on SharePoint, is equal to again that customer number, so number three, that will return my lines. Um, and then the next set of actions is where I turn the, the return data, the values that come back from these get items and, and get item, I uh, turn them into an array using the, the select action. Uh, and you can see it's just built up here. This is, this is based on the requirement of my script that I'll show you within Excel when we get to the bottom, because um, I've defined the, the content that this script is looking for or expecting. So there's my customer array. I do the same again with a sales array. And because there's multiple lines or multiple elements within that array, 
all of the same format with my quantity item number description, unit price and discount, which makes up each of the rows within that Excel file. I've got two compose actions, which are just purely calling those uh, arrays so that I've got them uh, as dynamic content for my final action, which is running a script. So you'll see that the, the script is in a preview uh, at the moment. Uh, and one of the things I have discovered is there is a 200 runtime limit per day uh, on this uh, new feature. But you can only imagine it's going to increase over time, hopefully. Um, and so what you do here is you, you build a script in Excel, like it says in, in its TypeScript. Um, I was brand new to TypeScript when I looked at this uh, possible scenario. Um, but there's a lot of documentation online from Microsoft, some demonstrations from Microsoft. And so I was able to take that and, and turn it into my bespoke solution for this particular scenario. And so once you've built that script and you've picked this action and chosen your particular script, it gives you all the different dynamic uh, fields that you're looking to, to populate as part of that script. They're all input values on my TypeScript. Um, and this is where I've passed, for instance, my sales array and my customer array, but also some of some fixed fields like the invoice number and check. Um, but equally, these could be dynamic values. Um, so I think it's probably worth me jumping onto Excel and just showing you a bit of the uh, TypeScript that I've built. Absolutely, yeah, please. So back onto back onto the invoice here. There, there is uh, a menu a menu item here called Automate, which is part of Excel Online. You don't see that in Excel Desktop. And that allows you to access the scripts that have been written for either this particular workbook or for Excel in general. So if I go into all scripts, you can see I've got my final invoice script. And, and these scripts are quite conveniently stored on your OneDrive, so very easy to uh, copy and, and paste elsewhere. So if I, if I go in to edit that script, you'll see now what looks like uh, JavaScript. And, and ultimately, that's what it is. It's, uh, TypeScript, and uh, this is where I built up the input variables. So some of these uh, fields here you'll recognize from my Power Automate when I was using the Excel script, the invoice number and date and payment method, but also you will hopefully see the array for, there we go, there's the customer array um, that I pass uh, in order to run this Excel script on this particular template. And then really, it's just trying to uh, populate the different uh, fields and uh, some clever looping logic looking for the, the fields by their sort of um, cell names. Um, and I go through them all and I populate them all and, that, and that's the end of the script. It hands back to Power Automate and, and the job's done. Um, there's a good, like I say, good documentation online. There's the Office Scripts documentation, and this is where I kind of learned about how to use it. There are the sample scripts, um, and, and, and that is, in a nutshell, how the, how the solution works. Perfect. That looks, that looks absolutely awesome. Now, I know that you've kind of documented a lot of this uh, on your blog, haven't you? And, you? and you've got your own YouTube channel. That's right, yeah. Pretty, pretty new to both blogging and YouTube. Um, just the last six to eight weeks, really. Um, but there's, there's interest, and I've got lots of uh, crazy ideas. I love a, I love a challenge. I think that's the thing. I, I love people asking me the question, "How could I do this?" Or, um, you know, "Is there a better way to do this?" And, and that's what sort of keeps me interested, keeps me going. So, how do people find all of your stuff? Whether that's Twitter or blog or uh, your YouTube or your LinkedIn or any one of those. So my, my profile name, I'm, I'm DemoBird365. So if you want to find me on LinkedIn or Twitter or even on the Power Platform community, uh, I'm very active there. If you stick DemoBird365 into Alexa Google, you'll find me really easily um, and you'll, you'll find my, my content. If you have any great ideas, hit me up with them or any questions, any challenges. I love the challenges, so please. <laughs> Okay. And we'll pop all the, we'll pop all your links uh, into the uh, into the YouTube notes as well and on the LinkedIn post. So I mean, there's some great posts that are on uh, Damien's site. I really like. There was one I think that you posted a few weeks ago now about how you could generate a PDF uh, from uh, using forms data. So that might be useful if you had like 
certificates or things like this so you know there's great content on there so i would definitely uh definitely recommend taking a look and this is where i found this uh was actually from uh from looking on your blog and uh and uh and your youtube content as well brilliant Cool. Yeah. Well, thank you ever so much for joining uh, today. Uh, hopefully you found this useful. Um, if you did, then please uh, like it, share, uh, go on to subscribe on to YouTube, hit the notification bell so you hear about new content that comes in. And of course, go across to uh, Damien's blog and his YouTube uh, and kind of follow his content because he's got some great, great stuff there, um, which is really useful if you're kind of getting up to grips with the Power Platform and uh, trying to use it in your situation. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Uh, reminder, I put all of my content out on YouTube and on LinkedIn, uh, and I do uh, live content as much as I can as well. So thank you very much and have a great day.